Hello, my name is Adam Novak, and today we're going to look at a 3D Mandelbrot set. I'm really excited to finally produce this video, and I hope you enjoy it. What you're actually seeing in front of you right now is all the code that is required to run a 3D Mandelbrot set. What this code actually does is it multiplies each vertex position by the matrix of its object origin location. By doing this, it makes zooming or offsetting much more intuitive because all we have to do is enter edit mode and displace the object itself. This would change how the Mandelbrot set is iterated over, but since we are using the vertex points relative to its object origin. Now let's get straight into coding this. The first thing to do is to open up Blender, then by holding control we'll push right a few times till you have the same window I have here. We'll next open up our console window. This is for debugging. The next thing we need to do is to open up a new text. This is where we will type our code inside of Blender using Python. I'll put screencast keys on for your convenience. Though it will not help you much in this, it will show you any errors I might type. Now let's get straight into coding. The first thing we do is we import some modules or libraries already used inside of Blender. This will simply make our lives a lot easier. By importing vector from Map Utilities, we are able to do matrix multiplication using the vector coordinates and multiplying by the object origin. The next thing we do is a bit of a joke and we'll set our constants. There is only really one in this case being the precision, and we'll set that to 100. This is the maximum amount of times that the Mandelbrot set will iterate over before it cancels, just so it doesn't blow out proportion with some of the values. The next thing we do is to access the data of the object that we want to iterate over more easily is we'll set it to be equal to vert coordinate. And this is how we're going to access the vertex data of this object. Now all we have to do is to run our awesome code. And all that's required is two more lines of logic, being a for loop and a while loop. The first for loop will simply iterate over every vertice inside of our object, and then it will multiply its coordinate location by the object origin. Since we're going to initiate a count every time, I'll initiate it now inside of this for loop, and this will be compared to our precision. We'll then get our location of our vertices being the x, the y and the z. By putting 0 inside of this list, we are accessing the x location first. Then all we do is copy and paste the code and are changing it to 1 and 2 for the y and the z location. This now gives us all three axes required to locate an object in 3D space. And now what we'll do is we'll write down our function in which we iterate over in order to create our Mandelbrot set. This Mandelbrot set will be importing every x, y, and z value of every vertice and iterating over it. By doing this, we can see how many counts it takes for this vertice to blow out using the Mandelbrot set. We can then multiply it by its vector location, being its distance from its origin. This should give us much more information than you would otherwise get from a 2D graph. If you would like to learn more about the Mandelbrot set, I have created many more videos on this, including two-dimensional ones. Otherwise, follow the link in the description below to the video where I've learnt this from being a video by number file. All we do now is add a while loop, and what we're going to do inside of here is check to make sure the absolute value of this Mandelbrot set is between 0 and 2. We also want to make sure this is not going to blow out by making sure the count value is less than precision. And then straight away, to make sure it does not continue on forever, We'll make sure the count increments up by one each time so we're not stuck in an infinite loop. Then all we do is to keep running this fractal function is to make sure the Mandelbrot value is equal to itself squared, subtract the z location. And that's it. All we have to do now is to multiply every one of these vertex locations by the amount of times it took for it to blow out. And the amount of times it did take to blow out is our final count value. So we are multiplying the vertex coordinates by the count. And to scale this better, or to change the influence that it actually has over the current object, I multiply the count by a constant, being 1 divided by 10, then subtracting 0.12. If you would like to change the amount of influence this Mandelbrot code has over your object, change the denominator being 10 here. By increasing it to 20, you would decrease its influence, and by decreasing it to about 5 or 2, you will increase in influence quite dramatically. As you can see, I did have one typing error being a space between a Z and the location. I was able to identify what line this was on by opening the console debugging window. 
Once we have fixed this, we can write our code whenever we like. Simply add any object you like into the 3D environment, then click Run Script. We will look at how to get the best results from using this Mandelbrot set. We'll add a bunch of spheres and subdivide them three times. I'll space them out so we can see different results from offsets and zooms. The UV spheres at the top here are different offsets at the Z axis, and the ones at the bottom are different zooms. In order to get these offsets, we need to change it in edit mode, not in object mode. Otherwise, the results will be exactly the same, since we are multiplying by the object origin. And then since we are operating the script on the active object, all we have to do is select the object we want to operate on, then click Run Script. And as we can see, we get many different results of the 3D Mandelbrot set. And by doing this, we can see how every axis performs without having to iterate and create every different Mandelbrot set as we progress through an axis being the Z, Y or X in 2D form. We also get the advantage of being able to more intuitively zoom or create offsets by manually manipulating the object using the mouse and the keyboard. There's one more particular advantage I like to about this in visualizing it iterate over time. By clicking Run Script many times, we can see how it performs and iterates over itself, which gives us another fractal version of the Mandelbrot set. As we can see here, I've got a layer of grids which are being iterated over, which can be used to get some really interesting information from the Mandelbrot set. Other than that, I think I better leave you here because I could probably talk forever and because I love fractals and maths and Python and coding. So I think this is really cool. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to stay in touch, otherwise support us on Patreon so I can keep creating more cool videos like this. I would like to investigate fractals more, so if you've got any ideas or something you'd like to see, just write it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to create something really cool around it. <laughs>